A Mission Australia survey has revealed young people are increasingly concerned about their mental health. The issue is now in the top three concerns for youth for the first time since the annual report began 15 years ago. The survey of 22,015 to 19 year olds pointed to stress, study problems and body image as key contributors. CEO of Youth Action Kate Aches, Katie Aitchison rather joins me now. Katie, thanks so much for dropping in. This survey by Mission Australia, particularly around mental health at the top, does that sort of align with what you see and what you do in your work? Absolutely. We know that mental health has been a massive issue for young people for quite a while. So one in four young people have uh, an issue with mental health. And so the fact that this survey is kind of bringing it to the top again, it just makes us realise that we've, there's a lot of work that we've got to do. What do you think's behind it? Part of it could be more young people are, are talking about it, happy to ex reveal that that's what's going on in their lives, more awareness potentially about healthy mental health? Yeah, I think that when we see increased numbers like this, it's because we're talking about it more, because more young people are seeking help, they're, they're knowing what they're looking for and they're seeing some sort of issues in their life and they're going to find that help. So we're seeing those numbers kind of increase, which is a good thing. The challenge is now, how do we respond to those numbers? Mm. So how do you respond to those numbers? What do you do about it? Well, we need some really good programs in schools. I think what you were saying before about stress, we're seeing young people being very stressed about their education, particularly a transition between primary to high school and then high school on to further education or trying to find employment. And we know that you know, there aren't the entry-level jobs that we used to have anymore. So young people are feeling the pressure and the stress about what they're going to do with their lives in a very different way than we had for generations before them. I was going to ask that because sort of those transition times in life are generally stressful yeah. and, and most people would say, well, that was stressful for me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But you're right about the jobs in the sense there aren't those kind of entry level, sort of base level jobs where you can kind of get a kick start into life. Yeah. So then does it mean that we need to relook at how we transition kids out of high school into employment or different kinds of programs? Yeah, the world is changing. Work is changing. We're seeing that, you know, it takes 4.7 years for a young person to find a job after they finish their education. And that's, you know, four years more than it used to take in the 80s. And so so there is a really significant difference in Australia than we used to have. We need to start be looking at the education system. How are we preparing young people? What are the skills that they need for the workforce? And are we doing that? And I think there's a lot of work that we need to do in the education system. What other issues sprung out from this report which resonated with you, Katie? I think there's a lot of discussion about discrimination and particularly about gender inequality and things like that which comes up and you know we know that there's some significant issues in Australia around discrimination but what's interesting for us is that gender sort of bias that we're seeing because we know that this 15 to 19 year old age group that young women in that are seven times more likely to be a victim of physical or sexual assault and that's really high we need to be looking at those issues and why is it happening with young people why is it particularly young women and that's a gender issue so the fact that this survey is sort of looking at discrimination and gender issues is really interesting for us that age group that sexual assault statistic is huge, it's huge. despite all the education around it so why is that happening? Like, it's quite extraordinary. You think that we'd actually be getting a sort of a handle on this, but it doesn't seem like it's happening. Well, you know, we've seen the, in this last year domestic violence. There's been a lot of discussion about domestic violence in Australia, which is amazing. I think we've done some really good work. But what we're not seeing is how is that translating into young people? How are we talking about healthy relationships and respectful relationships with young people? So they're not necessarily understanding what's normal and what's not normal. And so young people are more likely to be susceptible to people sort of taking advantage and taking, trying to take control of their relationship in a way that's not healthy. And so we need to sort of start talking about those really difficult conversations about consent and what is healthy and what's respectful in a relationship and how do you sort of um, create a relationship where you feel like you're an equal partner and that's really hard to do but I think we need to start talking about it now. The other big one, uh, body image, of course, something of a 15 to 19 year old age group would be pertinent for any era or generation Absolutely. but this one seems to be particularly different because of the mass of kind of self-reflective social media, taking pictures of yourself, there's selfie lights, there's selfie fans, there's this kind of projecting out an image of perfection which I think is very different to generations before potentially. Mm. What's your views on that? I have quite strong views on it. I do feel quite strongly about this 
self-reflective kind of world that a lot of people are, are growing up in and how that must be could be potentially quite damaging to how they feel about themselves yeah it can be very damaging but it can be really empowering so okay. I think we think of young people in their world and we all have you know all young people express themselves through the world that they have and young people have iPhones in their hands mm. so it's part of their daily life they're gonna learn they're gonna use it no matter what so we we can't just say stop doing it what we need to say is how do you do it in a healthy way so we've seen lots of campaigns rising up about you know what is a healthy body image and I'm proud of my body and and hashtags that are really empowering young people to challenge bullying and things like that mm. but we're also seeing the negative side where we're seeing young people sort of being attacked online and some of those different kind of bullying issues in the schoolyard we're seeing them go online and those are really concerning particularly things where it's getting into revenge porn and things like that where we're really concerned about young people's safety issues but more about how to help them have that conversation about if I'm taking this picture and I'm putting it online do I want what does that mean for me do I want it to be online do I want everybody to see it and mm. those are complex conversations and I think sometimes parents are a bit a bit scared to have them and sometimes we as older people feel like really threatened by it but I think young people are much more au fait with what's what they know is good and what they want to do we just need to help them to know what's safe and what's not safe